Hi, I'm Dr. Jamie Kappel. My colleague, Dr. David Franz, and I work in the Division of Neurology at Cincinnati Children's Hospital Medical Center in Cincinnati, Ohio. In our review article, we discuss the place of Everolimus in the treatment of tuberous sclerosis complex and the evidence supporting its use from a neurologic and neuropsychiatric perspective. Tuberous sclerosis complex, or TSC, is a rare genetic disorder caused mainly by inactivating mutations in the tumor suppressor genes TSC1 and TSC2, which lead to hyperactivity of the mammalian target of rapamycin, or mTOR, complex, and subsequent tumor growth in various organs. Within the past decade, the mTOR inhibitor Everolimus has been studied and approved in treating TSC-associated tumors, specifically subependymal giant cell astrocytomas, or SEGAs, in the brain and renal angiomyolipomas. In this article, we discuss the use of Everolimus for treatment of SEGAs and the growing evidence supporting the use of Everolimus in other TSC-related neurologic conditions, particularly in seizures and neuropsychiatric disease. SEGAs occur in up to 20% of patients with TSC, often appearing within the first two decades of life. The initial accelerated approval of Everolimus for the treatment of growing SEGAs was based on positive results from an open-label Phase II study, which were later confirmed in a larger double-blind Phase III study. In both of these studies, the use of Everolimus resulted in clinically significant reductions in SEGA volume. These reductions were also found to be sustained in long-term follow-up. Seizures, however, are among the most common of TSC manifestations, occurring in up to 96% of patients. Although anticonvulsants are primarily used, one-third of patients with TSC are refractory to this treatment. While Everolimus has not been approved for treating TSC-associated seizures, there is some evidence suggesting that Everolimus can improve seizure outcomes. A prospective Phase 1-2 study of Everolimus for refractory seizures demonstrated a seizure reduction of at least 50% in 12 of 20 patients, and a median seizure frequency reduction of 73% overall. The Phase 3 EXIST-3 study is expected to provide further evidence, with results expected to be published later in 2016. TSC-associated neuropsychiatric disorders, or TAND, are also common in TSC and can include intellectual disability, behavioral difficulties, and autism spectrum disorder. No medications are specifically indicated to treat TAND, and current evidence supporting use of mTOR inhibitors comes mainly from preclinical models and small studies. However, the Phase II RAD001 neurocognition trial, which began in 2011, and evaluations from EXIST-3 may provide more evidence for Everolimus in this role. Despite the data already available on the use of Everolimus in TSC, more study is required to examine the safety of Everolimus in the very young and for the treatment of TAND. Additional research into these areas could provide information that may pave the way for an early intervention, prevention-based clinical trial using mTOR inhibitors in infants with TSC for the assessment of optical, neurocognitive, developmental, and behavioral outcomes in patients with TSC. In conclusion, mTOR inhibitors, such as Everolimus, in addition to treating multiple TSC-related disease manifestations, may also have a role in modifying disease progression at a very young age. However, clinical studies are needed in this area. Thank you for listening. We hope you find our review article useful and informative.